Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to talk about the end of October and what I accomplished with my reading. So you will have seen by now my last weekend in October reading vlog and I uh, talked a bit about the books that I finished reading during that weekend. Um, but I did finish up a couple of other books in the last few days of October and um, a book before that reading vlog happened that I forgot to talk about. So I wanted to wrap those up and then just quickly talk about my progress on um, reducing my overall TBR this year. So you may remember that if the, at the beginning of the year I had 147 books, um, physical books, in my possession to be read that I would wanted to get down to at least under 100, um, even if it was at 99. And I was making fairly good progress until um, August and October, which <laughs> those two months have totally killed my uh, forward momentum. So I, in total, in, in October, I read 11 books. Only four of those were off my actual um, to-be-read shelves. And I brought in 13 books because October is my birthday month. And so I, of course, used birthday gifts to buy more books, <laughs> as you do. Um, so that gave me a plus nine, right, on my TBR. And so th my TBR at the end of October is sitting at 143. So 147 to 143, <laughs> that's the only, I've got a minus four here for the year so far. So I have made a promise to myself not to buy any books in November um, and to try to read exclusively off my um, own shelves. And I've already failed because I already picked up a nonfiction book from the library last weekend, which you saw in my vlog. But for the most part, I do want to focus on books that I already own in November. So that's where we are with that. Now, I just want to briefly touch on the four books that I finished in the month of October that I haven't talked about anywhere else. So the first one of those was a book I finished on audio, and that's A Better Man by Louise Penny, which is an installment in the Inspector Gamache mystery series. Um, this series takes place in a small village in Quebec called Three Pines. Inspector Gamache is... Um, over the course of the series has been in various different positions with the Charité de Quebec, which is their um, police force. And he is a very thoughtful and wise person, very kind man, and also very astute. And I very much enjoy this series of books. A Better Man was a, a really good addition although it had some problems. I had a really great conversation with Sarah over at Hardcover Hearts about some of the problems that we had with this book. She's also a fan of the series. And um, while we liked, uh, and I will speak for myself here, but we liked a lot of the same things and disliked a lot of the same things. But for myself, I liked obviously the developing relationships with all the main characters, which we're now like 15 books into the series, so I don't want to get too deep into that because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. But the personal relationships amongst the main characters, we made excellent, you know, there was excellent additions to those. Um, the mystery was good. Uh, I did figure out who the um, perpetrator was, and so that kind of, you know, I don't always, I don't very often <laughs> figure out who did it, so that was kind of a bummer. But the overall themes of domestic violence and what that does to a family and a community were really, really good. I thought I thought that theme of um, domestic violence was very good and very well done. There was a theme that started out very strongly in the beginning about um, climate change and what's that, what that does to icing in the major rivers um, in Quebec and um, the dangers that icing and ice break up and lots of rain and lots of freshwater inflow, those dangers, what that poses to communities in Quebec. And that was like a huge part of the very beginning of the novel. And then that was just dropped and never gone back to. And I feel like that was my major criticism of this book was, you know, Louise Penny starts off to like really get her teeth into this sort of climate change subplot. And then it just dies away like it just goes away and is never addressed again and I thought that was a real failure of the book um, but other than that I did enjoy it it was great on audio I then finished this Bohemoth 
Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Elman. Um, you guys have been following my progress with this over the month of October. This is a 988 page stream of consciousness novel. Although I will say there's a lot of hype around this book about how it's only eight sentences and that is not true. There are more than eight sentences in this book. It so happens that there are two um, points of view that we follow. One is a housewife, um, an entrepreneur uh, who we follow her stream of consciousness throughout the novel. That's the main part of the book. And then there's this subplot um, where you're in the perspective of a lion, a mountain lion, a lioness, um, who, uh, you know, when we follow her progress uh, in different things that happen to her. And so these two storylines sort of parallel each other and then cross together. And it's sort of how the two interweave that makes up one of the themes of the book. Um, I absolutely love this. I think it's pretty, pretty smart. I don't know why I want to say it's brilliant, but I do think um, Lucy Elman has a lot to say about modern American culture, about um, motherhood in America, about the mother-daughter relationship. Uh, she's dealing with um, big themes, big cultural themes like gun violence and climate change and domestic violence and all that sort of stuff all the while with these very humorous moments of this woman who has her has a home baking business um you know stepping on her youngest son's legos and what that feels like and how that you know jerks you out of whatever it is you're trying to do at the moment um so there's these moments of humor interspace throughout this woman's stream of consciousness I we I had buddy read this book with Doris um, over at Aldi books and will and uh, I think a buddy read is a great way to uh, get through this book because it keeps you on track and keeps you motivated to continue to read I approached this by saying you know we had we had um, proposed at the beginning of the month that we would try to read around 30 pages a day to finish it in a month and I tried to stick to that schedule and I thought I think that that um, you know didn't overwhelm me although I did get behind several times and had to read you know multiple days worth of reading in order to catch up but I also feel that that schedule sort of keeps you going with it it makes you um, you know, stay on task with it. I didn't find it difficult to read it all once I got into the flow of it. She does use, Elman does use uh, a device where the phrase, the fact that, acts as sort of the start of a new sentence. So instead of using punctuation, the fact that kind of acts as your stops. And I thought that was um, good and as soon you know after a while I stopped seeing the fact that and I just sort of my eye would skim over that part and I would continue to read I think another reason why I found this book so compelling was because I related to it so much so much of what this woman thinks in her day-to-day -day, um goings on are things that I have thought um they are you know not everything obviously and like her life is much different from mine I don't um, have a home baking business. I don't have four children. Um, but just thoughts that she's having about motherhood, about her relationship with her, especially there's a strong plot line around her relationship with her teenage daughter. She has a 15 year old daughter named Stacy. And that relationship, of course, is very trying at this point in their lives. Stacy seems to, her, the narrator thinks that Stacy hates her and, you know, as a mother of a teenage daughter myself, I, I related quite strongly to this part of the narrative and just lots of um, thinking about what it's like to, uh, you know, try to be a working mom, how you balance your time, how you always feel like you're leaving somebody out, whether it be your kids or your husband or your job or the house or the pets or whatever. You, you just feel like you're not dividing your time up well or appropriately and I just related to this very very much I will say this as as um, Britta Bowler mentioned in her review of this book it is highly American centric um, and so that there's lots of references to products and TV shows and movies 
and like cultural things about that have to do with America that people from other nations might find off-putting or just boring. Um, I totally would get that. I don't think this is a book for everyone at all, but I appreciate, excuse me, I appreciate very much having this voice, um, this voice of a middle-aged um, mom and, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneur. This voice, I don't think, is heard often enough in literature. So I appreciate that this book uh, has found an audience and is getting so much attention. Uh, I, I very much am glad for that. So then that was everything that I finished actually by October 31st and then on November 1st I finished two more books that I had started in October so I'm going to include them here. The first of which was The Outsider by Stephen King. This is a chunky horror book um, and this is, I didn't realize until after I logged it into Goodreads, it's evidently book one in the Holly Gibney series and Holly Gibney is a character from Stephen King's last trilogy, the Mr. Mercedes trilogy, um, but she doesn't actually come into the story until about halfway through. Um, the central plot line of this story is that a highly beloved um, Little League coach is accused of a horrific rape and murder of a 11 year old boy in a small town in Oklahoma. I think when I first started talking about this book I said it was in New Hampshire. It is not in New Hampshire. It is takes place in Oklahoma. Um, much different uh, place. But anyway it takes place in this sort of small town. He's a highly beloved coach. He is accused of and arrested for the murder and rape of this little boy. The first couple of chapters are rough, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty graphic and gross. And But if you can power through that, I mean, there are still gross scenes. This is Stephen King and this is horror. But the, it's fascinating because the, this man, this coach, um, Terry Maitland, can prove that he was somewhere else when the murder occurs. He is on videotape um, somewhere else when the murder occurs. And so how can he have been in a different location and still um, evidence of his being at the murder scene is there as well. So it's whether you believe the evidence of your eyes or some other kinds of evidence, um, that sort of sets the story off and it is really fascinating. I will say the second half of the book is not as strong as the first half of the book. Um, I often find with Stephen King, even though you know he's one of my favorite authors, um, that there's a lag point in the sort of middle uh, to last third of the book and there's no exception to this one, but uh, it, it starts off really strong and ends strongly. So I definitely uh, enjoyed this and I thought it was a great read for October. And then the last book that I finished on November 1st that I had started was my Gone with a Book selection, my second Gone with a Book selection for October, and that was Map and Lucia by E.F. Benson. I picked this one up on the strong recommendation from Sean over at Sean the Book Maniac. Um, and I found this book to be quite amusing. I will say, um, if you don't like books about bitchy characters, you probably aren't gonna like this one. So you're following two um, sort of middle-aged ladies. Uh, both are widows, I believe. Um, Lucia is the one that we meet first. She's recently, in the last year or so, been widowed. And she, um, you know, is starting to come out of her period of mourning and she's looking for to sort of get back into social life um, and she has traditionally been sort of the queen bee of her small village. Uh, but she's really tied with that village. And so you sort of are seeing whether or not she's going to like immerse herself back into that scene or um, head off into another social setting where uh, a second widowed woman, Map, Miss Map, um, is the, sort of the queen bee in her village and what happens when these two queen bees clash um, and start fighting it out for supremacy in the social scene of a village in England. Um, and so there's lots of quirky side characters and there's this sort of rivalry and um, you know 
Map and Lucia trying to outdo one another at every turn to gain social supremacy over the other in these small villages is quite amusing, but I will say also very, very bitchy. <laughs> That's all I can say. So if you don't like that, you probably won't like this book. I found it amusing. There were parts that I um, found just too much over the top, um, but other parts that I really... Uh, I really found amusing and the book ends up it, like the last sort of third of the book took me places I did not expect me uh, did not expect the novel to take me so that was uh, that's fun uh, when that happens and I ended up reading that one on ebook so that's what I, I finished there at the end of October I am excited that I am now into nonfiction November and I am you know busily into all not all but at least four of the nonfiction books that I had picked out to read in the month and uh, I'm loving that so I'll be back uh, in a week or so to check in with you about what I'm getting up to with nonfiction and until then I'll talk to you later